need high performance? Need flexibility? Need speed? Sounds like you've got yourself an FPGA shopping list. With the increasing rise of digitization, video processing, and automation, FPGAs have become more popular than ever before. But in order to get the most out of your field programmable gate array, we need to talk about your connectors. See, your FPGA is only as good as your ability to get data in and out. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. If you're working on an FPGA design, the choice of a connector solution can be a crucial element in your overall system design. Your FPGA connector solution needs to support the highest of speeds, small form factors, and emerging architectures. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Matthew Burns from Samtech joins me to discuss how you can get 56 gigabits per second PAM4 performance in your next FPGA application. We take a closer look at Samtech's Accelerate HD High Density Arrays, the details of Samtech's flyover technology, and how Samtech's complete portfolio of high-performance interconnects are a perfect fit for a 56 gigabit per second PAM4 FPGA application. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Samtech. Hi, Matt. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. It's nice to be with you again. Okay, so we're talking about 56 gigabit per second performance in FPGA applications today. But Matt, before we get started, can you highlight the solutions that Samtech offers as a whole? Yeah, I would love to. You know, one of the things we mentioned here on the first slide is when it comes to FPGA applications, we see emerging architectures, higher speeds, a smaller form factor. And not only do we see that at the system level, but we see that at the interconnect level where Samtech plays. When you look at our silicon to silicon connectivity solutions, whether that's at the front panel, the back plane, mezzanine, optics, or precision RF, I mean, you know from our series of previous chalk talks that Samtech is a leader in precision, high performance interconnect that are ideally suited for FPG applications. Now, speaking of FPGA applications, what do you think are the most common applications for FPGAs today, Matt? Most people you talk to today probably would first think that FPGAs would go in data center. And obviously, you see that listed here as one of the main applications. But increasingly, we see FPGA-related solutions, RFSO SOCs, MP SOCs, SOCs, and a number of emerging embedded applications as well. A lot of that's due to AI, a lot of that's due to 5G connectivity, a lot of that's due to digitization that we've experienced on a personal level since COVID. But those trends also are continuing to grow in the enterprise space as well. So FPGAs, we see transportation and automation, especially as you see more and more data that needs to be interpreted for ADAS and autonomous vehicles. Automation in the factory, whether that's on the manufacturing floor or in the control room with process automation. Again, high speed. There's a lot of video processing that needs to be done. Again, a lot of FPGAs are there just based because of the speed, the flexibility, the configurability of the solutions. Mill Arrow, again, there's a lot of machine vision. There's a lot of video processing. There's a lot of data that's being generated by any number of sensors that could be a HUDs display in an F-35 to control and command applications and munitions and the like. We've talked about data center. FPGAs are at the center of that, especially as data rates on the transceivers get to 56G, 112 and faster. Security and surveillance automation that ties into digitization, that ties into video processing, event detection, AI and ML. Uh, that's a really interesting market that just continues to grow by leaps and bounds. Obviously, there's a number of compute engines that affect AI. Some of the, the other trends we see with AI moving from the data center or the cloud to the fog or to the edge, you know, it's possible to put AI algorithms not only on server-grade solutions, but more uh, embedded compute engines. Medical imaging is all about high speed, high response times, low latency, tons of data. So ideally suited for uh, FPGAs. Instrumentation, you know, more and more accuracy on the data acquisition side 
increased data rates on the ADCs and the DACs requires more throughput between the data acquisition and the FPGA. So that's a nice application there for instrumentation. 5G kind of speaks for itself and uh, broadcast audio. 4K is almost prevalent. 8K is on the drawing board. So tons of data that has to get from the broadcast studio to us as consumers. And FPGAs are ideally suited to route all that data across that ecosystem. So Matt, if we're talking about FPGAs, we also need to talk about high-speed board-to-board interconnects, right? What specific solution from Samtech would you suggest? Well, when we think about all those applications we just mentioned, it's higher speed, it's increase in density, and it's small form factor. And one of the key products that we've seen being adopted around FPGAs is our Accelerate HD high density arrays. And when you look at all the features that this interconnect has, it's high speed, it's high density, and it's small form factor to the point that it has a, an ultra dense 720 pin per square inch system. The pitch is very small, 0.635 millimeters. Currently, we support up to 400 IOs uh, in a single connector, which is of interest to FPGA designers where there's high IO count uh, within a system. Accelerate HD has extremely small low profile, 5 millimeter. And it's only about a five millimeter width uh, in terms of, of where it sits on the PCB. Uh, it does use Samtech's open pin field array, which allows for flexibility in routing and grounding schemes based on the pin out passing through the connector. Another way of looking at that is, is that any one pin on the interconnect can act as a high speed differential pair, a high speed single ended signal, or a power delivery pin, you know, with maybe an amp and a half of current. When it comes to density, one of the key features of the Accelerate HD is that it uses a BGA style terminations to a PCB. This simplifies processing while also providing some self-aligning. This is a nice feature when uh, multiple connectors are included within a single PCB. And because of the popularity of the family, we also continue to expand the options with an Accelerate HD, not only in stack heights from seven to 16 in development, but we also have right angle solutions that are being developed for a number of applications. Okay, so Matt, if my audience wants to get started with an FPGA application, what kind of kit would you recommend? That's a great question, Amelia. And ultimately, it really depends upon the IC solution that your listeners are going to use, right? Is it going to be a pure FPGA? Is it going to be SOC? Is it going to have some of the RF capabilities that we see from some of the leading providers? One of the most popular families for a number of embedded applications is the Xilinx Zinc Ultrascale MP these are highly integrated solutions that combine both FPGA fabric with ARM core technology. One of the latest solutions that Xilinx has come out with is the first adaptive system on module. Xilinx historically has relied upon their ecosystem partners to provide a system on modules, but this is the first time that I'm aware of where Xilinx has come out with a solution focused on embedded applications. So the Crea platform features one of the latest uh, MP socks available from Xilinx, the uh, XCK26, which offers uh, performance up to 56 GPM4 uh, at the transceiver level. The SOM itself obviously packs all the necessary circuitry from a memory standpoint, power, LEDs, and it comes with both commercial and industry temp ranges. We work with uh, Xilinx and when developing this uh, SOM, and you can see from the picture on the bottom right that there's two of our Accelerate HD connectors that have been designed on the Crea platform. Again, for high speed, for small form factor, and high density. So there's 480 pins that Crea users can use from the SOM itself to any carrier card that they may design. Okay, so Matt, with these kinds of speeds, we also need to talk about bandwidth requirements, right? Are there other system architecture popping up in FPGA applications? Amelia, that's a a great observation. You've heard us talk about how a number of the latest FPGA solutions uh, feature 56 GPM4 transceivers. We're starting to see some 112 GPM4 solutions hit the market as well. And then, believe it or not, we know that several of the IC vendors, FPGA suppliers including, are also looking at the next node, which is greater than 200 gigabit per second per channel. Uh, It's almost mind-boggling thinking about all that data. In a number of applications where we have small form factors and density and data is only going from one PCB to another, board-to-board connectors continue to make sense, like Accelerate HD. However, in a number of applications, whether that's in the data center or medical imaging, Uh, there's a need to send data over longer distances than just a few inches. The challenge that comes, though, is that as speeds increase, 
the trace lengths in a particular medium decrease, and that's due to just the lossy signal paths that reside in the PCB. Whether that's a via or going through another transition on the PCB, it may be that someone's using a PCB material or PCB laminate with a high dielectric. One of the ways to get around that is to move from something traditional like an FR408 to something a little bit more exotic that's a higher performance or lower dielectric constant like a Megatron 6 uh, or a Megatron 7. However, even using some of these techniques, you're still limited in terms of how far the signals can extend. So Samtech's thought is let's get the signal out of the PCB and move it into a cable. You can see from the table on the bottom right that Samtech's micro twin X technology greatly increases the length a signal can go when looking at a, a equal channel loss budget, whether that's at 10 gigabit or 112 gigabit. Copper is not going to be able to go as far as optics, but copper costs a lot less than optics. So this is really the key of Samtech's uh, flyover technology. As we move on to this next slide, you can see from the graph on the right hand side the performance benefits that Twinax technology or Samtex flyover technology provides over PCB laminates. You can see at key Nyquist frequencies, both at 14 gigahertz and at 28 gigahertz, that as the frequency expands, the performance differentiation between the Samtex flyover technology and the PCB laminate material continues to expand. It means that flyover technology breaks the design constraints of traditional signaling, which in essence is routing the PCB, is routing signals through a PCB, and it allows for different system architectures in a cost-effective, high-performance, and heat-efficient manner. So Matt, we've discussed Samtech flyover technology in the past, but what sets Samtech apart from other solutions on the market today? That's a great question, Amelia. The idea of routing signals through cable is not revolutionary. What helps set Samtech apart is the performance of our high-speed ultra-low-skew twin-ax cable. The heart of that is really in the way that we manufacture our cables. We've developed some really unique manufacturing techniques within our factories that allow us to do a couple things. One, we can control the geometry of how we place the conductors within the dielectric material. We also have the ability of how we control the density of the dielectric material, how we apply the shields, the wraps, and how we construct that. And by fine tuning and by optimizing a number of these variables, that allows us to develop a twin ax cable that's illustrated here, unlike anything else on the market to date. So by having the co-extruded center conductors with the dielectric material, with the twin X shield, as well as the protective jacket, that allows us to get unparalleled performance of raw twin X cable. A good way of measuring that is the skew that we get in cable. We're less than 3.5 picoseconds per meter over extended lengths, and we see consistency within that low skew, even at high data rates uh, beyond 112 gigabits per second. Now, Matt, I know we've covered this in a previous Chalk Talk, but can you remind me of some popular Samtech flyover solutions? Yeah, we talked earlier about the benefits of our Accelerate HD connectors in terms of high speed, increased density, and small form factors. And we've ported that over to the cable domain, leveraging the benefits of our high speed ultra low skew twin axe cables. So when you combine the cables with the high performance interconnect, we come up with a really cool solution that we call our Accelerate Slim Cable Assemblies. These are the slimmest cable assembly in the industry. It's only about 7.6 millimeters wide. There's high density two row design. So again, that helps increase density, increase performance within the system. Currently we have both eight pair and 16 pair configurations with 24 in development. These do leverage our high performance, high speed, 34 gauge ultra low skew twin X cable as well. Something that we also have available are right angle versions uh, and vertical versions as well. All of our standard products for both the 8 and the 16 pair uh, configurations we have at standard lengths available through our distribution partner Mauser Electronics. Okay Matt, so what kind of performance can I get out of these cable assemblies? Well, that's always a popular question. We just wanted to present a little bit of technical data. This is available on our website as well as the landing pages that Mauser has. So we've included a few brief snapshots to illustrate the performance of the Accelerate cable in a certain specific application. So in this instance, we're looking at both the insertion loss of an 8-inch cable assembly and the return loss of that same 8-inch cable assembly with eight transceiver pairs activated. So this uses our Accelerate 
SI evaluation kit using 100 ohm impedance as well as DUT or the device under test, the fixturing has been de-embedded from the solution. So looking at that, you can see out to roughly 35 gigahertz that we have an insertion loss of less than 5 dB. So that gives us a high level of confidence that at key Nyquist frequencies, 14 gigahertz, especially at 28 gigahertz, which coincides with 56 GPM4 data rates, that there's enough performance in the cable to route 56 GPM4 over long lengths at any type of application. Similarly, the graph on the right, which is showing return loss, shows that there's plenty of room at high frequencies to show that the accelerate cables will perform as advertised. Okay, so Matt, for today's FPGA applications, heterogeneous multiprocessing is a great option, right? It is, and that speaks to the advantages of the highly integrated solutions that the FPGA vendors are coming out with. We talked earlier about the Xilinx Crea, the benefits of combining FPGA fabric with ARM cores and the like. So the Zinc Ultrascale Plus MP SOC family continues to build upon that. We also see an increasing number of application-specific SOMs being introduced to the industry that leverage the benefits of the integration that Ultrascale Plus MP SOCs uh, provide, as well as leveraging some of the high-performance interconnect that Samtech provides. So the kit that we're featuring here comes from Samtech partner Reflex CES. They're based uh, right outside of Paris. They've been a design partner for several of the FPGA vendors for a number of years. The latest Zeus platform has a number of high-speed I.O. options, including supporting 16 of the 26 gigabit per second GTYs on the top of the PCB, as well as 32 of the 12.5 gigabit per second GTH transceivers on the bottom of the PCB. What's cool about this platform, at least from Samtech's perspective, is that the Zeus platform leverages both the Accelerate HD board-to-board -board connector as well as the Accelerate cable for taking advantage of Samtech flyover technology in a application-specific solution. The Zeus platform as well as the Crea platform are both available from Mauser as well. Some of the applications that the Zeus platform is targeted for include high-precision measurement, AI, radar systems, SDR, and any configurable solution that anyone can come up with. So Matt, can we get under the hood of this Reflex CES Zeus platform? We can. The illustration here shows what a potential Zeus platform system would look like. This is actually the complete evaluation platform available from Reflex CES that includes the Zeus SOM. It includes a carrier card that has been developed by Reflex CES for evaluation of the platform. And it also includes the ever popular FMC Plus form factor daughter card, which routes the high speed twin axe cables from an ARF6 connector to some QSFP28 MSA pluggable solutions, simulating or emulating a front panel application within a data center. So we're real excited to see this platform uh, available from Reflex CES. We work with them to come up with the right cabling solution to achieve the performance that they needed, while also allowing end users flexibility to take advantage not only of the performance of the Ultrascale Plus and PSOC from Xilinx, but also the flyover technology from Samtech. Okay, Matt, this has been a lot to take in today. Can you recap your main points for me? Would be glad to, Amelia. Uh, key takeaway for your listeners today is that at Samtech, we offer a complete portfolio of high-performance interconnect, ideally suited for 56 GPM for FPG applications. That includes both our high-speed board-to-board interconnect, like the Accelerate HD, and it also includes our Samtech flyover technology, exemplified by the Accelerate cable solutions that we talked about in this Chalk Talk. We back that up with a global team of technical experts, online design tools, and world-class customer service to enable any design. Uh, for more information on the product solutions that we featured, uh, please do visit mauser.com. There's a specific landing page here for the Accelerate cable. And for technical support on Samtech solutions, please email us at sig at samtech.com. Excellent. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me yet again, Matt. Thanks, Amelia. Good to be with you. Have a great day. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Samtech. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. 
For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash EE Journal.